children, my name is Mary, but I'm also known as Miriam. Do you remember what my name means? Ah, very good. My name means strong, but it also means rebellious. I know it's quite a strange name for the mother of Jesus, but really, I have also sinned and am in need of a savior. Don't think for one minute that I am a saint or that I've never made a mistake. No, no. I also had to pray and overcome my sins with the help of Jesus. Even though I didn't deserve such a great honor, God chose me because I love him and have always tried to do his will. And although I am one of the poorest women in the Bible, God gave me one of the greatest privileges and the greatest responsibility to care for his beloved son and to help prepare him for his mission here on earth. Would you like to hear my story? Okay, let's begin. One day while I was praying, the angel Gabriel appeared to me to tell me that God had chosen me to be the mother of Jesus. I was speechless. But you also can imagine how Joseph felt when he found out that I was pregnant. It was very hard for him. At that time, Jewish law said that any girl who became pregnant without being married should be stoned. But Joseph was a kind man and did not want to make a big fuss about me. So he quickly decided to break off our engagement. But then the angel appeared to him in a dream and told him that the baby I was carrying would be the son of God and that he shouldn't be afraid to marry me. In fact, God wanted us to marry. Because through me, Jesus would be the son of Abraham. And through Joseph, Jesus would receive the legal right to the royal line of David. We were the chosen parents for Jesus and would fulfill the prophecy of the Bible about the Messiah. God took a great risk by sending Jesus to live here on earth because this world had become very bad and a dangerous place. One of the riskiest times in Jesus' life was in his childhood because that is the time when his character is formed to protect his mind from the wrong things that they were teaching in Israel schools in that time. I taught him at home. We enjoyed many beautiful moments reading the scrolls of the Bible together. It was during his childhood that God revealed to Jesus his mission here on earth. One day when Jesus was only 12 years old, he traveled to Jerusalem for Passover. On our way back home, we had a great fright when we couldn't find Jesus anywhere. We rushed back to Jerusalem as fast as we could, and there we found him in the synagogue talking to the priests and teachers. Imagine your child teaching the teachers of Israel. Incredible. Sometimes the siblings and older friends of Jesus got upset with him because he always told the truth and did what was right. However, no matter what they said or did, he never sinned. We need to be like that too. Even though I always knew that my son was the Messiah, sometimes I did not fully understand his mission. Once we had a family gathering in Canaan near the Lake of Galilee to celebrate the wedding of some relatives. Everything was going well until suddenly we discovered that the wine was almost gone. When I found this out, I immediately spoke to Jesus. I was sure he could help. I put all my trust in him and told everyone to do whatever he told them to do. Jesus turned the water in the pots into the best wine that any wedding had ever had. When Jesus was a baby, Joseph and I took him to the temple where all dear Simon prophesied that the sword would pierce my heart also. I did not understand his words at this time, but when I saw Jesus being nailed to the cross, I felt as if my heart had been cut in two. But do you know what? Just as Jesus sent his Holy Spirit as a comforter on that day of Pentecost, Jesus will also pour out his Holy Spirit on the faithful at the end of time to whom he will give the strength and comfort that they need to remain faithful during the final time of trouble. Just as the Holy Spirit came upon me so that I could give birth to the Messiah, despite my human nature, the Holy Spirit can also cause Jesus to be born in your heart. The Bible calls this a new birth. A divine nature that is different from our human nature appears in us and we will become the children of God. The 144,000 faithful at the end will also be like virgins because they do not allow themselves to be touched by the world 
and they are ready for the great wedding of the Lamb in heaven. Do you want to be the child of God and receive the Holy Spirit in your life? Do you want to teach people about Jesus? Then you must pray and resist the temptations of Satan. Surrender your heart to God and obey his commandments. And you also can be victorious. Goodbye, friends.